I am Susan Sharp Campbell, Associate for Educational Ministry for the Presbytery of West Virginia, and this is an overview of the Summer Stated Meeting of the Presbytery, which will be held at Davis Memorial Presbyterian Church in Elkins on Saturday, August 19th. In this overview, I'll be covering some of the highlights of the meeting. The packet for the meeting can be found at www.wvpresbytery.org. I hope that if you have not already read the packet, that you will plan to do so before arriving on Saturday as we gather in the presence of God's Spirit to be about the work to which God is calling us as a presbytery. Please be aware that if you are attending the meeting, we are no longer printing packets for everyone. If you desire a printed packet, please call the office at 304-744-7634 or email us at office at wvpresbytery.org prior to Thursday, August 17th. Otherwise, to have access to the packet during the meeting, you will need to download it in advance for viewing on a phone or tablet. The church where we're meeting doesn't have enough bandwidth for commissioners to view the packet using Wi-Fi during the meeting. Also, please be aware that during the meeting, the Wi-Fi will be needed for those presenting information, and it will be most helpful for those in advance to refrain from using it for other purposes, including email, Facebook, internet searches. There are three core values of the Presbytery which underlie all of our work. These are ministry, supporting our churches, missions, serving our communities, and building relationships, building connections with God and one another. Some of the people to note at this meeting include Susan Perry, who's our moderator. Susan is a ruling elder from the First Presbyterian Church in Logan. Ed Thompson, who is our general presbyter. And Maureen Wright, who is our stated clerk. The structure of the meeting is as follows. After greetings from the pastor of the host church, there'll be a brief time for the business of welcoming new teaching elders in the presbytery. Seating corresponding members, teaching elders who are laboring inside the bounds of our presbytery, but are members of other presbyteries. Introducing visiting teaching elders. Recognizing ruling elder commissioners who are attending presbytery for the first time in this role. There will also be a time to indicate that a quorum is present. For a stated meeting of the presbytery, a quorum is 20% of the teaching elder members and 20% of our churches represented by a ruling elder. Following the approval of the docket, the consent agenda will be under consideration. The consent agenda includes items that those planning the meeting anticipate will not generate further discussion. This does not mean that they are less important items, just that the sense is they, don't need, they won't need discussion. But if there is an item that any one person desires to discuss, they can request that it be removed from the consent agenda, and it will be, and will be taken up under the corresponding report later in the meeting. Items on the consent agenda for this meeting include excused absences, the ministry committee items seeking approval for terms of call for an installed pastor, approval for covenants and covenant renewals for a lay pastor, a commissioned ruling elder, and an interim pastor. Please note that those serving in a pastoral position that is not an installed position must have covenants renewed yearly. They're asking for approval for moderators in churches without teaching elders, as it's the responsibility of the presbytery to make provision for a moderator when there's no installed moderator. Approval for an authorized lay preacher to preside at communion. For teaching elders serving as chaplains and campus ministers to administer the Lord's Supper. There's a recommendation that there be no increase in minimum compensation for teaching elders and certified Christian educators in 2018 and the encouragement of churches to consider the Board of Pensions recommendation for a 1.2% salary increase. There's also the request for approval for a waiver from the rotation of officers for Bell Presbyterian Church. An approval as policy, a criminal background check for any person seeking to enter into a covenant relationship or terms of call with any of our churches. The mission committee is recommending that our offering today go to the sensibility offering for hunger. And the Bluestone committee is asking for authorization for the Lord's Supper to be celebrated at the fall getaway retreat. The final two items of this portion of the business meeting will be one, the appointment of temporary clerks. 
These are ruling elders and teaching elders appointed by the moderator who will hand out any materials during the meeting and who will count any votes other than voice votes. Secondly, there's the appointment of the Standing Committee on Bills and Overtures. These are leadership team members who would review any new business that was proposed to come before the body and make a recommendation. Following these items of business, the remainder of the morning will include a time focused on flood recovery from the flood of 2016 in Richwood, Clendenin, and the Greenbar Valley. A documentary by Mark Trent chronicling the flood itself and then recovery efforts will be a part of the presentation. This will be led by Stephen Baldwin and others from the West Virginia Ministry of Advocacy and Work Camps. Following the education piece, Nellie Howard, our Resource Center Director, will have an announcement. She will also have resources available to check out during the day. Worship concludes our morning. Leaders for worship will be Lauren Gerald, a ruling elder from Somersville, Joan Stewart, Director of West Virginia Ministry of Advocacy and Work Camps, David Bush, pastor of Winfield Presbyterian Church, and Rebecca Mim, pastor of Fleming Memorial Presbyterian Church in Fairmont. Worship will include communion and a time of blessing of the hands. Please note that all the communion bread will be gluten-free. Prior to lunch, Peter Vile, pastor of Davis Memorial Presbyterian Church in Elkins, will give us instructions and pray for our meal. After lunch, we will gather back with a hymn and a prayer. Then we will move into the reports of Presbytery staff and committees. These reports usually consist of two parts, recommendations that must be voted on by the Presbytery and information to be shared with the Presbytery. While individual reports require a second, reports from committees do not, as by implication, they have already been reviewed and the members of the committee believe this is something that should be considered by the Presbytery as a whole. Maureen Wright, our stated clerk's report, contains information on correspondence that she has received and action that has been taken on it. As part of the information section, you will find the 2016 statistical report for the Presbytery. It is at this point in the meeting that our procedural matters will be reviewed. These can be found on page 7 in the packet and are divided into three parts. The first part has to do with principles of parliamentary law. This includes courtesy to all, majority rule, one item at a time, respect the rights of the minority, partiality for none, usually pro and con speakers alternate identifying their positions before they speak, and no one can speak more than once on an item until all those wishing to speak have been heard, and then one can speak a second time, but no more without special permission. The second part of procedural matters refers to the relevant sections of Presbytery's manual, which states that no new business shall be introduced after lunch without vote on a different deadline, and that any new business is to be presented in written form. The section also identifies who has voice at the meeting and who has voice and vote. I would suggest you review this section before the meeting. The final section on procedural matters states our procedural rules. One, persons wishing to speak will do so by using the microphone. These will be scattered in the sanctuary. Two, each speaker, after recognition by the moderator, will give his or her name and church name or other relationship to the presbytery. Three, debate on each item, assuming it's given approval by two-thirds of the voting participants at the beginning of the meeting, is limited 30 minutes per main motion, with each speaker limited to three minutes. Given that the packet is available online, please be prepared to stick to this time frame if you wish to speak to a particular item. It is not helpful when someone speaks for two, two and a half minutes about how limited this time is and then in their remaining time speaks to the issue. And four, a recommendation from a committee or other entity of the Presbytery does not need a motion or second from the floor. Please note that anyone speaking on the floor of Presbytery shall address their comments to the moderator not to those sitting in the pews or to those who have previously spoken. This includes the good news from the pews section as time as well, when speakers should always use the microphone. The docket notes that the final portion of the stated clerk's report mentions a recommendation on Presbyterian Church the Covenant, which is requested to leave the PCUSA with its property.
There is ongoing conversation between the Presbytery and the session according to our Presbytery's policy for dismissal, and it is hoped that there will be a recommendation shared at this meeting. The report of the General Presbyter gives you an overview of the work that Ed Thompson has been doing in this position and includes his goals for the year. We will now come to the portion of the agenda largely dedicated to committee reports. As I mentioned earlier, these are usually in two parts, recommendations and information. The first committee report will be that of the Stewardship Committee, whose responsibility it is to prepare a budget directing use of our financial resources. The proposed budget for 2018 can be found on pages 13 to 16 in the advance packet. Pages 17 to 21 provide Presbytery's financial position as of the end of the first half of 2017. On pages 35 to 37, you will find information regarding mid-year shared mission and per capita giving per church. Pages 22 to 25 show what churches have pledged and the per capita they've been assessed for this year. I encourage you, take a few minutes. Find your church's information. Is it what you thought it would be? I encourage you to share with your where your congregation is with your session as you make your report to the session. If you're behind, please do what you can. On page 26, the chart at the top of the page indicates those churches who have pledged the highest amounts for 2017. The bottom chart indicates which churches have pledged the most per member. The conclu concluding financial pages are those of Bluestone and, and Friends of Bluestone financial reports for your information. The nominating committee will be recommending persons to serve as the moderator elect for the Presbytery and as committee moderators for 2018, to serve as committee members where there are current vacancies, and to serve as Senate and General Assembly commissioners. Once the recommendations are made, there will be opportunities for nominations from the floor for each position. Persons who are nominated from the floor must have agreed prior to being nominated to serve if elected. The Nurture Committee will then be recommending several changes to the Presbytery Statement of Purpose and Policy for Presbytery of West Virginia events involving children, youth, and persons with disabilities, more commonly known as our Child Protection Policy. These changes come on the recommendation of the Safe Child Oversight Team, whose members are listed at the bottom of, pages, of page 35. The policy itself, with the proposed changes, can be found on pages 35 to 66. Proposed changes, as noted in yellow at the top of each page, are highlighted in yellow. If you are printing the packet out for your use, I would suggest that you skip over printing these pages. Don't forget to read them because the changes will be addressed separately as part of the meeting on a case change by change basis. The minute for stewardship is new from the stewardship committee. The committee is seeking to provide training and support to pastors, sessions, and congregations in the area of stewardship. The leadership team will be recommending persons to serve on the nominating committee and to serve as the chair of the nominating committee. This makes it so the nominating committee isn't nominating its own members. As with other nominations, there will be an opportunity to nominate someone from the floor, though again the person so nominated must have agreed in advance to serve if elected. The leadership team is also that entity which proposes meeting dates and places for the Presbytery's approval, and they will be bringing dates and places for 2018. Most, if not all, of the Ministry Committee's recommendations will have been approved on the consent agenda. As you read through the information items in the packet, however, I would encourage you to please pay particular attention to item number two of the Ministry Committee report, which lifts up the small church conference to be held September 23rd at Summersville Presbyterian Church. Good news from the pews. It's an opportunity for ruling elder commissioners and ruling elder commissioners only to share some of the exciting things that are happening in their churches. The intent behind this is that perhaps someone else will hear what another church is doing and find some ideas and inspiration in what is shared. If you are your session's ruling elder commissioner and would like to share, please be prepared to do so in a fairly concise manner and direct remarks to the moderator using the microphone. The trustees of the Presbytery manage the property of the Presbytery to further the mission and ministry God has entrusted to us. 
as they seek to manage the property from three of our recently dissolved and closed congregations, they are asking that the money received from the sale of a fourth congregation that's become a community church be made available for caring for these three properties. You will also find information on the actions they are taking on the future of these properties. The mission committee recommends where the offering each Presbytery meeting will be sent. This too will most likely be approved as part of the consent agenda. But I would encourage you to note under items for information their work on a new covenant with our partners in Neri Presbytery in Kenya and a January 2018 trip to Kenya. You'll also note there's an international peacemaker who will be in our midst in late September and early October. Some of the Presbytery committees have only provided written reports because they don't have items to be voted on. These include the Bluestone Committee. Their report includes information on summer camp, Presbytery-wide retreats, non-Presbytery use, infrastructure work, financial and administrative information. The final report in your packet is from the Vocations Committee. Please note that this committee will be beginning a new authorized lay preacher commissioned ruling elder preparation program in September 2018. You will find a great deal of information shared by committees and others at this meeting. One expectation of ruling elder commissioners and teaching elders is that they will report the work of the presbytery at this meeting at their next session meeting so that to facilitate communication and connection. Please note information and events that are taking place and share these. And in addition to the information in the online packet, there will be announcements on upcoming events projected on the screen at the Presbytery meeting. These will include information on the Bluestone Committee Fall Getaway Retreat to be held the first weekend of October, information on a workshop on family and church family systems at the end of October, information on the Soul Shop Ministering to Suicidal Desperation Workshop in late November, and the Synod of the Trini celebration of its 300th anniversary on September 17th. At the end of committee reports is the time the Presbytery will take up any new business that was introduced appropriately. One final note, as we gather in councils of the church, including this Presbytery meeting, we do so in faith, trusting that God's Spirit is among us and that our task is to discern the will of God as we are led by the Spirit to make decisions. That's why we don't have absentee ballots or proxy votes, and why you're encouraged to come having read the packet, but not having made up your mind. Please come with an openness to God's Spirit and a willingness to listen, as the Spirit speaks to in the words of those of us gathered, and we join together in worship and prayer and business. The meeting will conclude with a charge and benediction by the moderator. Before leaving the church, please take time to complete the feedback form. It will assist the leadership team and others in planning for future presbytery meetings. We do take your comments seriously. Please put these evaluation forms and your name tags in the boxes or bags as you exit. I hope to see you on Saturday, August 19th. Any feedback you could provide on this video would be helpful. Just put it on your evaluation form or send it to stated clerk at, at wvpresbytery.org. Thank you.